It's time to panic because Valve just released some information on their brand new Steam machine, which appears to be basically an all-in-one PC that should hopefully be available at a very low price. And a lot of people, well, they're kind of angry about this, thinking it's not gonna be fast enough, it's not good enough. But I actually think, depending on the price, this might actually be not only very good overall, but it might actually pretty much save PC gaming. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Jawa. Jawa's mission is to be the community for safely buying and selling PC parts at a reasonable price, offering low fees and great customer service, which I can definitely attest to as I personally bought this RTX 3070 from Jawa anonymously. And not only did it arrive quickly, but when I ran into an issue, they immediately replaced it with a flawless substitute and asked that I only send the old one back after I confirmed the new GPU worked great. And the best part is the price I got this card at was well below a other listings I could find anywhere else, likely thanks in part to Jawa's much lower seller fees of 9 to 12 percent, depending on when you join. So, if you're interested in buying or selling PC parts on a platform with low fees and great customer service, be sure to click the link in the description below and watch out for some of my hardware that'll likely be popping up very soon. Okay, so why will the Steam Machine, in my opinion, save PC gaming if the price is right? Well, to answer that, let's take a look at the specs. So this is gonna be launching with a Zen 4 CPU, which you can kind of think of as the 7000 series. It's gonna apparently have six cores and 12 threads. Yuck! Only six cores and not eight disgusting okay in all seriousness i think six cores for an entry level or even mid-range style pc is fine is it going to be perfect for multitasking no but you know what fellas look yeah can't have everything if you're trying to spend as little money as possible and i really think that's what they're going for and this should be able to run all games just fine 12 threads will be fine running at apparently up to 4.8 gigahertz you know maybe you can even overclock it we'll see but yeah i think that's actually going to be perfectly fine to run pretty much all games at 144 fps roughly and i think that that's going to be kind of the target for this machine you know 60 to 144 fps depending on the game if it's a multiplayer competitive title probably looking for higher frame rates. If it's a single player title, maybe you're looking for 60 to 90 FPS. And I think this CPU can really do it Zen 4, the Ryzen 7000 series. I think we'll have no problem. I would expect this to be similar unless it has 3D cache, which I don't think it will. I'll expect this to be similar to something like a 7600X. And that is a perfectly capable CPU in 2025. But now let's talk about the GPU because this is where basically the whole power of the machine is going to be coming from. And this is going to be an RDNA 3 GPU with 28 compute units running up to 2.45 gigahertz with GASP 8 gigabytes of GDDR6. Now we'll get into the rest of the specs in just a second, but let's tackle the VRAM. Look, yeah, that sucks. That sucks that it's only going to have 8 gigabytes of VRAM. We're trying to phase that out. So to bring it back, to bring it from the brink kind of doesn't feel great. But look, is eight gigabytes ideal? Sure, maybe not. If you're willing to play at medium or even in some games low settings, which guys, this is an entry to mid-range PC at best. This is what they're targeting. Eight gigabytes, it's not great, but it'll get the job done still. And they're trying to come in at a really low price. I think, I hear you, it should have been 12 gigabytes, but can eight gigabytes work? Yes, it can work. So not ideal deal. I don't love that. I wish it was 12 or maybe even 16, but it'll work. Now, the RDNA 3 GPU, that's basically talking about the RX 7000 series. And much like the Ryzen 7000 series, that's only one generation old. So it's not that old. And 28 compute units running at 2.45 gigahertz, well, that puts it really close to the 7600 XT, a GPU you should still be able to buy today. And that GPU has 32 compute units running at 2.47 gigahertz. So it's pretty much the same GPU, the only difference being effectively a few more cores. And the 7600 XT today, I still think is plenty fine. It's pretty comparable, at least according to tech power up to something like an RTX 2080 super. And that's a perfectly fine GPU in 2025. You know, is it the straw? Is it a 5090? No, it's not a 5090. It's not even a 5080. Can you believe it? Disgusting. 
but this is a perfectly capable GPU. Now it does have 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Again, would it be great if it was 32? Sure, but this is clearly a budget system. And apparently it's gonna have FSR. It's gonna be available with 512 gigabyte or two terabyte options. So probably a lot of options on the storage there. And it's gonna have DisplayPort 1.4, so no 2.1. Again, that kind of sucks, but look, you can't have everything. And it's also gonna have HDMI 2.0. Now to HDMI 2.0, that's a little questionable. Fellas, what in the world? Hopefully that's wrong because they're saying 4K 120 FPS. I mean, with display stream compression, sure, but hopefully that's HDMI 2.1 because that would be a shame. It's also gonna have Type-C, two USB 3.2, two USB 2.0, gigabit ethernet, Wi-Fi 6E, and Bluetooth 5.3. And apparently they're saying over six times the power of the Steam Deck. Yeah, that's probably about right. And it's gonna run Steam OS, but you can install Windows and it's gonna be available in early 2026. So you're basically getting a six core 12 thread 7600X, mid-range CPU in 2025 and a mid-range 7600 XT GPU in 2025, but only eight gigabytes of VRAM. And here's where it comes down to the price point. If this thing's like 400, maybe even 500 bucks, look, building a PC with that amount of power, it's basically not possible anywhere near that price point. And people are starting to get priced out of entry-level PC gaming. And this would effectively solve that. This system that you don't have to buy Windows, you don't have to buy a case, you don't have to buy, like you don't have to buy any of this extra stuff that people never ever factor into their PC builds. I'm telling you a system like this would almost certainly cost you well north of $800, maybe even 900, maybe even $1,000. If you can get scrappy, use secondhand parts, you know, maybe you can come close to six, $700, but most people building a system like this are gonna get close to $1,000, seriously. So with that being the case, cause look, not everybody's gonna perfectly optimize their PC build. If you can build this for $15, great. And let me know your system specs in the comments below and how you did it. I want to hear it. But I do think really for the price, this could legitimately save PC gaming from the insane price hikes that we've been seeing that have really been tough on people trying to get an entry level PC gaming. I can't wait for this thing to come out. And I really do hope they hit an aggressive price point. If they can hit $400 on this machine, it is going to be insane. Imagine people wanting to get into PC gaming and you just tell them, look, go buy this thing for 400 bucks. Cause you know what, screw it. I'm gonna go ahead and try and throw this together right now. And I'm gonna see what I can even get done here. So let's look 7,600X on Newegg. I'm gonna look that up. Okay, that's $204 right there just for the CPU. Okay, so 204 bucks. What about a 7,600 XT? Okay, so a comparable GPU to this thing. What is it gonna come in at? All right, well, I can't find a 7,600 XT, but I can find a 7,600. That's fairly comparable. It might be a little bit slower, but that's another $249. So just the CPU and GPU were already over $550. That's wild. Now you have to look at an SSD. So let's look at a one terabyte SSD, pull one up and here's a $75 one terabyte SSD. I'll add that to my cart. Okay. So we'll need an AM5 motherboard and let's just find some cheap slop. Okay. So here's an Asus B650E Max Gaming. It's got PCIe 5, but it's 140 bucks. I feel like that's a reasonable amount to purchase. And hey, it comes with a free 16 gigabyte kit of RAM. So I mean, we are really deal hunting here. And if I add that to the cart, RAM plus a motherboard for 140 bucks, insanely good deal. And that does match actually the Steam Deck here. But I mean, we're not even talking about Windows. We're not talking about, okay, so let's find Windows 11. Let's do that. Okay, there's, you know, 120 bucks. Let's add that to the cart. And if you want to, you know, remove it, sure, remove it. But now we have to find a case. So let's find a PC case. Okay, I found a Fantex XT Pro Ultra, 80 bucks. That's pretty reasonable to spend on a case. So what do we add? as a whole, I'm at $1,058.94. So look, and could you remove a few hundred dollars by optimizing this build? Yes, you probably could. You could choose other components. You could get really scrappy. Maybe you could even save $300. Maybe you could go, maybe you could go from $1,100 to $800. But what I'm telling you is the reason why I went through all this is because again, we're talking close to $1,000 to build a comparable PC. If Valve can bring this in, even at 500 bucks, this legitimately pretty much saves PC gaming. This is an insanely good deal. I think people are hating on this way too much. I honestly think that this would be amazing. Now, if it's $800 or more, sure. Yeah, that's not amazing. That's now like, eh, eh. but if it's 500 bucks or less, incredible. So I think it's going to save PC gaming. I think it's the best thing that's happened to PC gaming 
in years. And I think this is gonna pressure Nvidia and AMD to start lowering the prices on their GPUs. This can be a huge competitor. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think this will cause a huge upset in the PC market? Do you think this will save PC gaming? Or do you think that it's not a great deal? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And of course, see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.